What is going on, guys? Welcome back. Commentary for you. One of the, my sponsors, Steel Supplements. Link in discount code down in the description. You also know I talked to you so much about my Glance LED. And as I said, I bought this unit out of my own pocket. Once I had it, I realized as a sports fan, as a gamer, it changed my life. I turn this thing on every single morning. Real-time updates. I know the games. I know the schedules. And once they start, I get live data animations for scores, runners on base, player updates. Again, if, if you know a sports fan, if you are a sports fan, if you want to stay up to date with every other sport while you're watching one on TV, it is absolutely the way to go. Again, the selling point for me is the fact that you're not putting out any more money once you have the unit. No subscription fees, not just for sports, for weather, for stocks, for news. I know once you get it, you'll be satisfied, and you won't know how you got by without it. Something I want to do on my channel for a long time is talk about Orioles baseball, talk about sports, and I'm going to start to do that because, you know, in sports, this story plays out all the time. The star player goes to a new team, and how many times are the results less than expected? How many times do they fail? But March 28th, Baltimore Orioles got just what they needed from the signing of Corbin Burns. You know, we lose our ace in John Means over the last two seasons. Really looked like a star pitcher. Had a no-hitter, has to have Tommy John, struggles to come back, struggles to recover. And in his place, Kyle Bradish steps up in a major way, almost throws a no-hitter of his own, but he gets hurt unexpectedly. So you have all this pressure now, even more so than before on Corbin Burns, and he comes out and delivers nearly a flawless performance. I mean, if not for a future Hall of Famer and Mike Trout, it would have been. You know, this is an 11-3 to victory backed up by also a really solid offensive performance. I mean, as you saw on the opening card here, Patrick Sandoval gets just beat around. And I think, to me, it started with a four-pitch walk on Gunnar Henderson. I think that really set the tone for Sandoval kind of being apprehensive with his pitches. And it obviously led to the bases being loaded early. Anthony Santander, Jordan Westberg, both get a ribby. The second inning, it doesn't get any easier. You know, and before you can blink, it's 5-1. to one. Eventually, he gets pulled before the close of the third. I mean, this guy threw 60 pitches and only had five outs. And I think what's promising about the game is you really got to see that plate discipline. You really got to see every single batter get on base. Even if Ramon Urias needed a walk to do so, every player got on base. You know, Anthony Santander, like we talked about, four RBI day, first home run of the season. Cedric Mullins really kind of sealed the game if it wasn't sealed already with a three-run shot. Almost got pulled back by Mike Trout, but he couldn't get to that one. You know, I think Austin Hayes, kind of the one guy, kind of maybe been a little bit on the bubble, the most at risk, if you will, because if you look at the way this team is constructed, you've got young guys like, you know, Heston Kerstad, Colton Kowser. They're ready to be the next person up. All they're waiting for is kind of one slip, one injury. And it looks to me like Austin Hayes is going to be the first person that's going to run astray of having himself being replaced by one of those two. Now, listen, he didn't have the worst defensive effort. He actually threw a ball in really nicely. Mateo dropped it as he kind of gets acclimated to second base. But listen, at the plate, he only had a single and a walk. Dylan Tate also makes his return. Now, it was nice to see Dylan Tate again because he was supposed to come back last year. I remember, you know, looking at him and reading these stories about, you know, the frustrations, kind of throwing simulated starts in the bullpen and just having to work through injuries, but clearly just not being healthy. He comes in, doesn't really look like he has a rhythm. You know, kind of started out with his speeds very low from what I expected to. Maybe they're going to catch up. But, you know, one of the better pitchers from the 2022 season, so it's nice to see him kind of at least be given the opportunity to keep his spot in the rotation. I just don't know... If this is the Dylan Tate that we have, he's going to be able to do that. And I think, again, if you go back to it, the main story of the day was 
what you're looking at before that. You know, Corbin Burns is living up to the billing. Six innings, 11 strikeouts, no walks, 82 pitches. He leaves the game up 8-1. to one. The curveball looked absolutely unhittable. And to be fair, if it was a close game, he probably would have stayed in longer. And to be honest, Mike Trout still has power. I think it's good for the Angels if Mike Trout plays well this season. I think it's good for Major League Baseball if he plays well. And to be totally honest, I kind of wanted to see that confidence tested. You know, Burns has incredible stuff, and he went right back to it. When you look at the current rotation, the Euros have you have a guy like Grayson Rodriguez loses confidence really easy. Go back to the start in Texas. It's good to see those players on the bench look out at a, a certified star pitcher and know that they can learn from him how to trust your pitches. You know, they watched a master class, one of the best opening days by any Orioles pitcher. You know, Jim Palmer and Mike Mussina both started six opening days for the Orioles. Now, I know in recent memory, you might think about, you know, John Means, for example, uh, Galsman, Tillman, but listen, Palmer and Mussina are Hall of Fame pitchers for a reason. And, and hopefully, as a side note, with this new management we'll talk about in a moment, we can recognize Mike Mussina and what he brought to this team. You know, he's still the best Orioles pitcher I ever saw in person. And I, I hate the politics of baseball where he doesn't really get the remembrance, the flowers, if you will, that he deserves because he signed by the Yankees. It's kind of kept him away from all the accolades that he should have. You know, there's some other cool stories in this since we're going to talk about the Yankees. Aaron Hicks comes back to Baltimore after being a much-needed piece to a playoff run last year, kind of stepped in for Cedric Mullins after Cedric got hurt. It was really nice to see him start for the Angels. Get a round of applause at Camden Yards because his career, he looked absolutely cooked after he left the Yankees, and it's nice to kind of see that resurgence. And, you know, to that point, when you talk about the trade that got Corbin Burns here and the pieces that were given up, D.L. Hall, I got to meet D.L. Hall a couple times. Really nice guy and a great pitcher. You know, to know he's the number two guy in Milwaukee right now is awesome. I don't think he was going to have that opportunity here. Joey Ortiz, same thing. But season ticket holders, we had an opportunity to meet and greet with him about two years ago. Very cool guy. Extremely humble, down to earth. But again, you look at the current roster. Westberg, Henderson, Holiday, before you even get to Mateo, you know, where was Joey Ortiz going to fit in? I believe he's going to be starting third base for Milwaukee. And just to close this off with the ownership, David Rubenstein got a chance to be in the booth. And what an impressive owner. You know, well spoken, understands the history, the legacy of the team, but also understands his role. You know, he isn't a baseball guy, he's a finance guy. And he wants to focus on that side of things. You know, in the Jerry Jones world of ownership, it's refreshing to hear an owner admit that, hey, listen, I'm a billionaire from business, not from baseball. And he wants to put the best people in position to be successful. You know, talked about hiring women, hiring minorities, how that was important to him to have diversity within the team. You know, he kind of joked about how small he felt going down, meeting the players pregame, and kind of ensuring to them, listen, he is going to do everything he can to put them in a position to be able to win. Just not going through the lip service of, oh, I, I grew up here, I'm a fan of the team, my favorite color is orange. I mean, he was talking about trying to get out of school early to go watch Mel Pappas. Him and Jim Palmer kind of broke out into this, you know, 60s and 70s O's trivia contest in the middle of the inning. He spoke about buying the Magna Carta for over $20 million, by the way, almost in passing the same way, you know, I would talk about the pizza I got for lunch. And I think, you know, the rest of the game, we saw the ownership kind of go around the stadium. And for what it's worth, those aren't things John Angelos did. So could not ask for a better way to start the season. So, of course, yours are going to have off today. Needed kind of a cover for a rain day, which was almost needed in Baltimore, but was needed by other teams. Grayson Rodriguez is going to get the start on Saturday, 4 p.m. tilt for game two. Griffin Canning is going to get his start for the Angels. 
kind of fifth year in the rotation there. Be interesting to see the lineup they go with. So other than that, I will recap that game and hopefully every Orioles game kind of mix in some footage, some images from the games I go to and the Orioles events. I appreciate you guys watching this and I will be back tomorrow with more commentary.